designed by an Ethiopian architect, the Sabdarjang tomb marks the last of the colossal Mughal-style garden tombs. It is therefore referred to as the last flicker in the lamp of the Mughal Empire. The tomb was designed to be in line with Emperor Humayun's tomb, but despite lacking the grandeur, its raw and rustic beauty shines through. The complex was built in 1754 by Shuja Uttala for his father Savdarjan, also known as Mirza Mukim Khan, who was the Subahdahar of Awadh under Muhammad Shah Rangila. The monument was built at a cost of 3 lakh rupees with marble and other material being pinched from different mausoleums. It is largely believed that Shuja Uttala stripped the nearby older tomb of Abdul Rahim Khan -e Khana among other Mughal buildings to embellish the tomb. The entrance of the complex is lined with different information boards providing a brief history of the monument. The signages are available in Hindi and English. A separate board is also written in Braille to make the place more accessible to visually impaired visitors. The mausoleum stands constructed on an elevated platform which is surrounded by a huge square garden measuring 280 meters on each side with a courtyard and a mosque which is housed inside the compound. The tomb which is built with red and brownish yellow colored sandstone has a high terrace and is capped with a massive central dome. It measures up to a height of 92 feet. The facade of the tomb has a Persian inscription etched on its surface which reads, When the hero of plain bravery departs from the transitory, may he become a resident of God's paradise. The design which is inspired by the Taj Mahal comprises intricate patterns yet lacks the Taj's finesse. The tomb has a square-shaped central chamber with a cenotaph and eight partitions. Rococo plaster is used in the embellishment of the interior mausoleum and it is lined with Pietra Dura designs. The rubble walls inside the tomb have a number of depressed arches which are called chhatris on the four corners. This is a distinct aspect of Indo-Islamic architecture. For the most part, the chambers are rectangular with octagonal ends. Four polygonal towers with kiosks are placed at each corner of the main tomb. The actual graves or burial chambers of Tsavdarjan and his wife Amanat Begum are placed in an underground burial in the monument. The Charba garden that surrounds the tomb spreads across 300 square meters and is divided into four equal squares, lined by pathways and canals. This is a typical feature of late Mughal and Persian design. The four square gardens are further divided into smaller gardens, aptly named the Char Bar. The garden area has water canals that lead to an ornate gateway and three pavilions. These pavilions are named Jungli Mahal or Palace in the Woods, Moti Mahal or Pearl Palace and Pat Shapasan, which were the Emperor's favourite quarters. Another significant structure within the tomb complex is a mosque. Built to the right of the exquisite main entrance, the mosque has two storeys and three beautiful onion-shaped domes. The mosque was supposedly constructed by Savdar Jung's wife. These tribe domes along with the cuboidal minarets and their pointy finials emerge from a floral base. The gateway of the mosque is flanked by numerous chambers which were once meant for students of the Islamic seminary. According to certain sources, the Nawab's family once used the pavilions of Jangli Mahal, Moti Mahal and Badsha Pasant as their residence. These have now been converted into the Office of the Archaeological Survey of India. In 2019, the ASI undertook an initiative to illuminate the tomb with LED lights after sunset. As per an official statement, a total of 213 LED lights were installed to highlight the architectural beauty, including the arches and the minarets of the tomb. The statement further added 
that efficient lights were used which consumed 62% less electricity. The Union Culture Minister Prahlad Singh Patel and New Delhi MP Meenakshi Lekhi inaugurated this architectural illumination. The easiest way to reach the Safdar Jung tomb is via metro. One needs to get off at the Jorbak metro station located on the yellow line. One can take an auto from here as the monument is approximately 3 kilometers away. If you are traveling via bus, you could either halt at the Jorbak bus stop or the Safdar Jung Madarsa. The structure is located approximately 10 kilometers away from the New Delhi railway station. The monument is open 7 days a week from about 7 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m. in the evening. The ticket for adult Indians is Rs 20 and it is Rs 300 for foreigners.